Hello, my name is Luke, and today we're going to be building a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Some of the tools needed to complete the build are a cordless impact, keyhole saw, side cutters, staple gun, writing utensil, tape measure, soldering iron, and cordless sawzall. Materials needed for the project are a pallet, and you can use plastic or wood, concrete reinforcement wire, landscaping cloth. This particular landscaping cloth is very helpful for us. These green lines help us keep everything aligned in the process. You'll see more as we get to that. Zip ties and screws, and you're gonna use the screws for the wooden pallets. We're gonna start with our pallet. We prefer to use plastic pallets because they last longer. Next thing you're gonna do is put six evenly spaced holes in the pallet, starting with one in the center. I have here a jig that we use because we produce so many, which serves as a good visual reference as to the spacing of the holes we're going to cut out. Here at Leaf and Limb, we produce a lot of John Sioux bioreactors, so we use this template to assist us in marking our hole locations. At home, what you want to do is just evenly space the holes so that you get even distribution of air through the bioreactor. Now we're going to take and mark our holes with paint so we know where to cut. All right, hold the mark. Okay, now we're going to remove the material from our marked locations. A couple of things that's important to note is that you don't need to cut it all the way out to the bottom. You just want to cut out enough to hold the pipe in place so that it doesn't move. And if you're using a wooden pallet, you may need to go back and add uh, some material in areas uh, in case uh, you, you cut into the framework so you don't lose rigidity. And as always, safety first. save time, we've got another pallet in the next step of the process. As you can see, we use the lines of landscaping cloth to cover the pallet square. We used our staple gun to staple the landscaping cloth to the pallet. Now we're going to cut holes in landscaping cloth to match our holes in the pallet. Now we're going to cut our hole in the landscaping fabric. What I like to use is this heat gun here. That way it'll keep the landscaping cloth from fraying once it's cut. And basically just feel around where we made our cut and take the material right out. So the next step in the process is building a cylinder of the Johnson Sioux bioreactor. To do that, we're going to measure and cut our concrete reinforcement wire to 11 foot 7 inches. You may need to adjust that measurement depending on the size of your pallet. That's what we use. So what you're going to do is cut the wire at the vertical piece, leaving a tail on the end of the wire. This tail is going to be used to tie back onto itself and hold the cylinder together. I use these side cutters, which is easy and fast. Uh, a heavier duty tool like bolt cutters can be used to make the job easier. Here's an example of how you use the tail of the wire to wrap it around itself to hold the wire together. So I'm going to, I'm going to use it towards the end to give myself leverage. Just kind of go around like that, bring it all the way back around the wire, and then just bend it down so it doesn't get caught. And now it's good and tight. As you can see, we've used the tail of the wire to attach the two ends together. Now we're going to take and massage the wire out so that we achieve the uniform cylinder shape we're looking for. And just kind of walk around and find all the bent ones and work it in 
and eventually you'll come out with a nice round uniform cylinder. So the next step is to line our cylinder we just built with our landscaping cloth. Uh, what you're going to want to do is cut the cloth about two foot longer than the wire and that's going to give ourselves a lot of overlap so the material doesn't come out. Once you've got the cloth cut to length, you're going to put it inside of the cylinder and using the green line as a reference, kind of line it up in parallel with the horizontal piece here um, and giving yourself about six inches of overlap on the top, which will give you six inches of overlap on the bottom. And then we'll tighten it down. Next step is to attach the landscaping cloth to the cylinder. I'm gonna use my soldering iron and put two small holes around the vertical piece to give myself a spot to put a zip tie in to hold it together. Now we're going to melt our holes in the cloth. We'll let it get warm and stick it through. All right, let's sit this down carefully not to burn anything. We're going to run our zip tie through the cloth and around the vertical wire. Make sure you get it good and tight. And you just want to continue the same way all the way around. Now that we're done, we're going to cut the tails off. So we're nice and clean. All right, we're almost done. The next step is to take the cylinder and put it on the pallet. We're going to use the smooth side of the cylinder down so that it won't dig in. And we'll be able to move it around and get it centered up on the pallet. Just like that. Now we're going to attach the cylinder down to the pallet. If you're using a plastic pallet, what you're going to look for is a rib in the pallet so that you can run your zip tie through it to hold the cylinder down. If you're using a wooden pallet, you're going to want to use a couple of screws and screw them down at an angle like that so that you're trapping the bottom rung of the wire and holding it down to the pallet. Okay, let's attach our cylinder. I'm gonna use my soldering iron again. Let this thing get good and hot. What I'm gonna do is find my rib and I'm gonna burn a hole in front of the rib and then through the cylinder to the back side of the rib. So we'll put one like that and then we'll kind of go in like that. Then we'll find another one that's easy, easily accessible right here. Go there and go through it to the other side. Now that we've got our holes done, we're going to take our zip tie and go through the cylinder, around the rib, and back to itself. So get that good and tight. We'll do another one here, another one we did. I'm going around the rib. That's how you do it. Now that we've gotten started attaching the cylinder down to the pallet right here, what we're gonna wanna do is work at opposite sides so that we make sure we keep the cylinder centered on the pallet. So I'm gonna pull this thing over, checking that I'm all the way on everywhere. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna repeat the process, find a rib, flip my soldering iron heat up. Gonna go to this that side. And we're gonna put one in so that we don't lose our spot. So we 
we'll go down around the rib and back up. That should be good for now. So let's turn it and make sure we're sitting on here good. I'm going to throw one more in there. So let's feel around, find our rib. Here's the rib. Pick the gun up. And we're going to stick us a hole just like so. And we're going to keep on going around until we get the four corners done. That way we're sure that the cylinder is centered on the pallet. And once it's pretty good and tight and held down, we can go back and, and add all of them uh, at that time. As you're zip tying down the cylinder to the plastic pallet, if you're using a plastic pallet, it's good to put one on every block if you can. If not, you can skip a spot, go to the ends, whatever you need to do. There's gonna be a lot of weight in here, so the more the better. And at that point, you're done with the outside of your Johnson Sioux bioreactor.